This video is going to cover my personal salary as an engineer starting out right after college, along with all my expenses so you can see how much an engineer might make, where all the money goes, and what you can afford. Now obviously this will differ a lot for every person and especially in other countries, but this is something I was curious about before leaving college. Most of this actually doesn't even apply to me anymore because I don't work for this company, so I've got no problem letting you guys know the numbers and I want to be honest in hopes to at least inform you about what you could maybe expect. So let's begin. My starting salary was $76,560 per year before taxes, also known as your gross salary. Now this is pretty high as a starting salary for an engineer right out of college. I was very surprised and grateful to get this offer, so you never know what you can expect. But watch where this all goes. Right off the bat, $24,100 were gone to taxes. So yes, over 30% of each paycheck was gone. I'll get to the monthly number soon, but I'm just showing the yearly ones first. Then of my total salary, I put away $6,120 to my 401k per year. This is your retirement account, so I was not losing this money, I just won't be seeing it for a few decades. Now this represents 8% of my paycheck, and I did that because the company essentially matched half of it and put that into the account as well, meaning I basically got free money for saving my own money, and it's very possible you'll have this too. I also had a Roth 401k, where they put the money in the account after they take out taxes, that way I don't have to pay the taxes on that money decades in the future when I take the money out. So now we're at $46,335 per year, which is about $3,861 per month. But there's still more that goes away before this hits my bank account, and that's health insurance and dental coverage. My health insurance was $145 per month, and dental was only $11 per month. And now we're at $3,705, which is finally what goes into my actual bank account every month. This means I really get $44,463 per year, which is 58% of the initial gross salary, or a 42% decrease. So yes, that gross salary can be a deceiving number if you're planning your finances before actually getting a paycheck and seeing what happens. So now let's start with that monthly salary and look at my personal monthly expenses, which obviously are unique to me, but here you go anyway. My rent was $13.50 per month. I was living in a studio apartment in Los Angeles, which is an expensive city. Had I wanted to live with a roommate, this could have been much cheaper though. My next biggest expense, unfortunately, was student loans. I have to pay $477 per month for 10 years to pay off about $41,000 in student loans. These are really not fun no matter what you make, and especially if you live in the US where we have so much debt, community college is definitely not a bad choice. Next, food for me was about $400 per month, which includes groceries and going out to eat. This is a lot, and it's because I was eating at restaurants probably more than I should have. My car insurance was $150 per month. Utilities for my apartment were $150 per month, and this included cable, Wi-Fi, gas, and electricity. Water and trash were paid for by my apartment complex, or this would have been higher, because water especially is expensive. My cell phone is $80 per month. Gas for my car was about 50 per month, but luckily I lived only about 10 miles from work. And I had miscellaneous expenses that were about 150 per month on average, and this just covered random things like gym membership, haircuts, toiletries I needed, random vacations I did on occasion, and so on. Some months this was really high, and others this was just like 50 bucks, so I just averaged it all. So my expenses totaled about $2,800 per month, and subtract that from my monthly salary, and I was saving just about $900 per month. They say you should save about 10% of your paycheck, so I was very happy with this. And technically this is more, because remember I was putting a good amount towards my 401k, but I just won't be seeing that for a while, so I kind of don't think about it when looking at my finances. And by the way, to emphasize the downside of student loans, if I did not have any, I could have increased my savings by $477 or 53% per month. Also by living with friends and cutting down on rent, I could have increased my savings significantly. Or if you live at home after school, you can save a lot of money. So yes, you do have some power in increasing your savings depending on your living situation. Now with these savings, one thing you could afford that I did have to get is a car. I took out a loan to get a $20,000 car and the loan came out to about $300 per month. I didn't put this in the expenses from above, but this did drop my savings down to $600 per month. And something I didn't do but I could have considered was paying like $100 more to my loans per month and getting them paid off a few years early. And I didn't do much traveling while working here, but round trip flights across the US can cost as low as $300 at times, but even at $600, just by saving up for a few months, you can travel a decent amount. And you can see how it's very doable to go out with friends and grab drinks without being too worried about when the next paycheck is coming. 
But remember not to look at your savings like you have all that money to actually spend. Even if you could afford taking out a loan on a $40,000 car, that doesn't mean you should. Remember, especially in your 20s, your finances are very important. For a lot of people watching, by the time you graduate college, you're within 10 years of possibly getting a house and starting a family. You'll thank yourself greatly by saving up now. And during my time at this company, I did get one raise, which was 2%, and this came out to like $40 more per paycheck, so nothing incredibly exciting. The bigger raises come when you get promotions like to the next level engineer or to manager or whatever. Again, this will differ wildly from person to person, and I can only speak for myself. You should not take any of these numbers you see as a guarantee of what you can expect, and don't use the numbers I showed as any means of financial advice. But hopefully it maybe gave you an idea for what's to come, especially for those who have yet to get a full-time job and don't know what to expect at all. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.